Welcome to K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here for your weekly K-State recruiting update. We were a little basketball heavy last week with D.Y. Talk uh, about everything going on with K-State basketball as they just continue to hoard top 100 recruits on visits. Will they be able to land any of them? That's yet to be determined. We'll see how that ends up working out for them uh, throughout this cycle and the next couple of years to come. But today it's going to be back to football and talking about that. But before we dive into everything going on with that, let's talk about some guys that might be joining the Cats on this trip next year because the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at Cats2Ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. One cat that we anticipate being on that trip next season, or at least – in consideration to go on it because do we know how the travel situation will work will they be able to take the entire team for this game my guess is that the entire team can go yeah i would like, think I, so too especially I, because don't you you get one game every, every you get one conference game a year where you can take more guys so even if it wasn't just special for the ireland trip you could maybe but i would assume that something like this they'd be like yeah you can take everybody they could take everybody to uh the Cowboy Stadium against Stanford. So I feel like you'd be able to. Yeah, but I think non-con games, you can take however many you want. I, we, we, we talked about this at the two-lane game, trying to find the rules. It's very cloudy because, of course, it is. It's the NCAA, so there's no clear-cut way to, to find any of this out. It's all like, uh, is this how I interpret the rules right? But nonetheless, I think no matter what, we expect Lincoln Cure to be a part of the travel roster, at least to Ireland, uh, giving this opportunity. And let's talk about the Wildcats five-star commit because Friday night we will be making our trip out to Goodland. Um, look, we'd make a one-off trip out there anyways if it wasn't on the way to Colorado, but it makes sense, especially now that we know the Colorado game is a late one. So we'll have plenty of time afterwards to, to rest up and get to Boulder. But we will be in town to see the Goodland Cowboys and Lincoln Cure on Friday night. We'll have highlights. We'll talk to Lincoln. We'll have a bunch of different stuff going on out there. But I ask you, Drew, what is it that you're most looking forward to about getting to see Lincoln Cure in person on Friday? I think I'm most interested in just kind of seeing how he looks and how he moves because, I mean, you got to remember that he's probably in that 215 to 220 range the last time that we – really got to see him. So now it's like, okay, is he in that 225, 230 range? Is he still moving well if he has really put on that extra weight and muscle? So I think I'm most looking forward to all of that and, and really just getting to go somewhere totally different and totally off the map for me of like, this is where like I go see a high school football game because typically I'm in like the Kansas City area or Wichita or Topeka like never in a million years would you have told me that like, Hey, we're going to go take a, a recruiting trip to Goodland, Kansas. So I, I think I'm most excited about that. Really? Yeah. Uh, Goodland off to a three and two start this season. Uh, so they are uh, in, in a setup right now. They will be playing Colby on Friday night, which should be a fascinating game because Colby's off to a good start with their season. They're four and one. Um, and they've kind of, they, they might have the most variety in terms of pulling a fast one over our on three win probability that Massey ratings has been doing this year. Because if you go and look, the Massey ratings predictions have, have been pretty spot on for most of them. I think last week in the Kansas top 25 games that were played, they only got one of the predictions wrong. Um, and if you go look at, at Colby, they've gotten three of the five predictions wrong this season uh, for, for Colby and for Goodland, they've been right in all five games. So, uh, that's just another little plug for the uh, Massey ratings in our high school football coverage over at On3. But uh, I, I'm excited to get out there and just see. We've seen the highlights and we see the numbers. And a, an athlete like that against 3A competition, like there's a level of dominance that Lincoln Cure just kind of lives up to. Because I would, you know, I would point this out to people. Well, yes, um, 3A and lower typically, I mean, heck, even 4A, 5 anywhere in Kansas, really. Rarely do you see five-star talent, but you can sometimes see those guys at higher level classes even and go, man, this guy's a five-star. He, he's not really standing out. Like, 
well, how's he a four? How's he, how's he a five? And, and we even had moments like that last year when we were at games. I mean, we won't name who it was, but you, you watch certain guys, you go, really that guy, like what, what's he, there's no doubt that when you, you watch a quarter of Goodland football, who the five-star player is, even if it was, you know, you, you turned on mascot mode and you, everybody was the same size and looked the exact same, but the, the talent and abilities were still there. You'd be able to tell with Lincoln cure. So I'm excited just to see how much he stands out. And kind of like we talked about yesterday with Avery Johnson kind of has to just go out and be a stud for K state this weekend against Colorado. It's kind of what I'm expecting Lincoln cure to do, like put the team on your back and, and go make plays for him. And I would also say credit to, to a lot of Lincoln's teammates and his, his squad this year. Like they're in the middle of one of their better seasons in recent years and, and putting together a better team performance. So I'm interested to see what that dynamic is like. Cause we've talked so much uh, throughout this process uh, with Lincoln cure about the credit goes to his team and his coach for primarily playing him at the position that he's going to play at the next level when so many others would just be like, uh, you're going to take every rep at quarterback so you touch the ball every time and we're going to run you 35 times a game or something. Because when he gets moving with the football, he does not go down very easy. No, I'm really excited to see how they use him because they, they've they started to use him in a lot of different ways. Like they have him at tight end, receiver. And if you looked on, uh, I believe it was his Twitter post on Monday, had him at, at Wildcat a little bit. So you kind of get to see a little bit of everything with Lincoln. And, and I think that's what I'm really looking forward to is how how they really scheme him open because it, really that's what it comes down to at this level is he's going to be double or triple teamed probably. So how are you going to be able to scheme him to get him so open? And even if he's not open, I'm, I'm excited to see okay, what's his contested catch look like? Can he really go up there and really just, I call it dunking on somebody when you're throwing it up that high and just go get it. So I, I was looking forward to that. And, you know, I've gotten to see a lot of different levels at of uh, Kansas football in the last two years. I went to an eight-man game last year to watch Caden Massey and, and now going to Goodland. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really just kind of racking everything up a little bit. Uh, this is a little geography question for you. Obviously, we've been to Goodland. We were there on commitment day. For, we, we, we have been to Goodland before. Uh, do you know what county Goodland is in? Legitimately, I don't even have a guess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they're, they are in Sherman County. This oh. I only asked that uh, because over the weekend, it was a topic of conversation where I think I'm pretty good about when a car drives by me and I see the license plate and I can I can tell you what the the two number the two letter code is for what county it is. Like I'm from Reno, so my car had the RN on it. We live in Sedgwick now, so we got a, an SG on there. Um, you see somebody drive by and they're rocking the RC. You're like, oh, that's Rice County. Shout out to Rice. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. My wife though different part of the state that she's from you, you people in the Eastern quarter, Eastern third of the state, this would go for you, Drew. I don't think you have a full respect and understanding for the rest of the state of Kansas. You're like, yeah, you know, it kind of ends around Manhattan, Topeka, and then everything West of that, like screw it. Like I live with some guys from Johnson County, my freshman year at K state, and they all acted like Manhattan was Western Kansas. I was like, it does. It, Western Kansas is not even Hutch where I grew up. Like you got to go way past that before you get to Western Kansas. We will indeed be in Western Kansas. So I was quizzing my wife over the weekend um, with the the different letter codes in there. She was a little better than I thought. She still struggled on some. Uh, and then, I mean, I've got one brother that is just absolutely clueless on a lot of things, and it was pretty comical to ask him uh, while we were eating lunch on Sunday. So I only bring that up uh, because that may be something that we do on the road where I'll just be throwing you and DY some, uh, some, some County codes and you got to tell me which County I'm talking about there. And you'll probably be introduced to new ones like Sherman where the Goodland Cowboys hail from, and they will be playing this Friday night. So we will be there to see Lincoln cure and have tons of coverage for you on that. So be looking for it Friday night into Saturday morning. Now, Outside of Lincoln Cure, what else do we need to know on the recruiting front, Drew? Yeah, so there, 
has been a few uh, new uh, wide receiver offers that K-State has made in the 2025 class recently, which I mean, we've talked about that they want another high school wide receiver. And, and they're a little bit different in their styles. So one is LeBron Hill, uh, who is a former Purdue commit, uh, decommitted after uh, somebody that I had no idea was even at Purdue, Graham Harrell was their offensive coordinator, got fired uh, halfway through his first season at Purdue. Tough scene. Uh, that's, yeah, it's typically not a great sign for, for you. Uh, and he decommitted, I believe it was four or five days ago now, and then K-State offered him. Uh, he has a, an official visit set to Missouri uh, November 9th, and then it, it's just up to K-State on, okay, when do we want to get an official visit scheduled for him? Uh, LeBron Hill also 6'4", so a bigger wide receiver. Uh, and then uh, the other wide receiver is a smaller guy, uh, Quinton Gibson. He's only 5'9", goes to high school in Texas. Uh, his recruitment is really kind of just starting to take off uh, because K-State offered him over the weekend in Colorado, Mississippi State, Pittsburgh, TCU, uh, and I believe one other Power 4 school, I have offered him just since his his senior season started. So you kind of get to see kind of two different recruitments on how they have gone about and two different playing styles because uh, with um, LeBron Hill, it's more of like that physical go-get-it kind of receiver where Quentin Gibson is more of that kind of slot guy that is very, very fast. So it, it'll be interesting to see kind of where K-State goes from there with those two guys. Uh, and I think that it's just noteworthy because that's a position where K-State really needs another player and have wanted another player. And now you're kind of getting to see two guys kind of come to the forefront and now it's okay. What do you do next? Yeah. That, yeah. That's a, that's a, a good call there. Uh, one other thing, I'll throw this at you real quick. Cause people obviously are interested. You, you talk about Purdue decommitments. Everybody saw Noah King, the K-State commit uh, uh, trying to on social media uh, recruit another D Galloway to K State. Uh, not Drew's boy though. This is uh, this is Dwayne Galloway. He decommitted from Purdue. He was a four star corner. Um, early returns because it's still very early. Is it, this is nothing more than just a social media plea and a guy trying to to hoard talent for the school he's committed to? There's nothing real here currently, correct? Yeah, right now I don't think that there's anything really that you need to really. I don't want to say waste your time on, but there's nothing that's like pressing at this moment with that. It, it's a little bit of him using social media engagement. It's a little bit of, I believe that him and Noah King are pretty close. So it, it's a little bit of both. What, what's more noteworthy about that, I think, is that what's kind of got under the radar is that there are some other teams that are also trying to flip Noah King. So kind of getting to see Noah King tweet at him. And tell him to come to, come to K State. You got to see RJ Collins do the same thing. Lincoln Cure did the same thing. And those are the yep. three. Those are the three guys that are really being coveted by other teams. So to really see that, I, I think is probably more noteworthy than uh, than Dwayne Galloway uh, really kind of showing love to K State. When I, I'm not even sure if K State's even offered him. Yeah, I, I was gonna say yeah, you have Noah King in there, but uh, probably even more notable is that. Despite all the chaos, Lincoln Cure also got in the mix, uh, you know, throwing a, a K State uh, hail mary his way. So that that is significant news, and uh, probably a good way to wrap up the recruiting update this week is that we're going to go see Lincoln Cure, and Lincoln Cure still doing more things than not to make you think that he is going to end up at K State, even though I know people have that concern about Oregon, uh, all the inflammatory. KU media propaganda last week about him being there. Hey, turns out some guys just want to go watch their brother play. And if the, their option is sitting in the seats as a regular with, you know, in a crappy setting for a college football game with 3,000 fans uh, next to him or getting wined and dined as a recruit, you're probably going to take advantage of that and just, you know, go for it. So, uh, probably a good chance that's what was going on there for, for Lincoln Cure uh, when he made that trip to, to Kansas City, uh, not last week, but the week before when KU lost to TCU. Um, you didn't need me to tell you that they 
that they lost. You knew if they're if they're playing a, a team that is not an FCS school that played Washburn five years ago, uh, they have lost this season. As fan reminded us, so well, they'll uh, probably win. They'll probably win this week since they don't play. I don't know that. I, Dude, mean, I think think there who knows i i want to see what the results of their scrimmages are in practice this week uh before i i'm so certain with that uh so yeah get ready everybody lincoln cure content coming your way on friday and then we'll have more recruiting updates throughout the week drew will have you covered with that over on kso and a kind of a, an odd time where we're going to be going through this three-week stretch we're only in week two of it right now where no visitors for k-state because they're either on a buy or on the road so uh, it'll be kind of fascinating to, to see that long list of names that will be there at the end of October when K-State hosts KU uh, for their first home game uh, in quite some time and also probably the most marquee home game of the season. So that'll be a, a hot one to, to keep an eye on. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. We'll be back again tomorrow after I return from hopefully some playoff glory in Kansas City to watch the Royals play the Yankees tonight in game three, and we will talk more about the Cats and everything going on as we get closer to K-State, Colorado this weekend, a reunion of former Big 8, Big 12 foes, and uh, really exciting to see those teams playing each other once again. So we're out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.